What's up guys, Kariskos Master here, going to be fighting against Obelix in this matchup and this is going to be a pretty nice example of um, the diamond, or I'm sorry, shock cavalry versus diamond and the kind of exploit quote unquote that you can uh, do with your shock cavalry uh, in action in an actual battle. So I have taken the Sassanids in this matchup. Here I've got uh, two Pushtigban and one Griff Panwar and a Persian mounted uh, bowman with a Dalamite and a Persian brigade. That is going to be the exact same on my other flank. I've also got two Persian bows supporting. Now you might uh, notice that my Persian bows are not behind my uh, cavalry and thus are pretty vulnerable to a charge. I'll explain why I've kept them there uh, soon. I've got three Armenian slingers, one Dalamite warrior and one Persian brigade with a Spabit general on the flanks. We are fighting according to NAFT rules, not a rule set that I'm uh, uh, very appreciative of. I'm, uh, it's, yeah, the thing is, it kind of artificially tries to make weak factions stronger like the Sassanids. I appreciate the effort. The only thing is it makes Huns incredibly powerful, nigh undefeatable. Um, that was already the case in regular tournament rules. Under NAFT rules, the, the difference about NAFT rules is that you can bring uh, six cavalry excluding your general so if you have a cavalry general option you can bring seven total cavalry and then you can bring two horse skirmishers which are not counted as part of your cavalry so you can bring a total of nine cavalry with factions like um alans sassanids huns only difference is for sassanids you have very cheap options in persian mounted bowmen is and that is something i would highly recommend bringing um they still perform the very useful function of just charging into infantry holding down infantry getting a lot of kills on the uh, impact they are very light so they won't get too many kills off the impact but um, uh, off of impact damage but they do their job and for so, uh, such cheap units they can easily harass uh, you know make uh, quantity of cavalry matter a lot more and in general be make it very easy to do what i'm doing here in that i'm enveloping my opponent by a huge huge margin Look at the width of my formation, I mean, of my uh, army. I've got cavalry everywhere, I've got, you know, infantry, and then I've got Persian mounted bows and archers on the flanks. The Armenian singers are going to be used against the cavalry. Now, before we start this battle, let me take a, a pretty, a, a kind of a more detailed look at Obelix's army. He's brought four Fantitores, he has brought uh, a Skolai Palatine and Cataf two Cataphractari, Skolai Palatine, two Cataphractari, uh, four Armigeri Defensores, and four Elite Palatina and a Magister Militum with a single gold. This uh, is an interesting, it's, it's, not, it's a weak army. And it very perfectly almost encapsulates the problem that uh, Western Roman Empire faces under the tournament rules. Western Roman Empire are an incredibly underpowered faction regardless. Under NAFT rules, they are even more underpowered. The problem with Western Roman Empire in general is that they have too many uh is that they don't have good enough elite tier units their uh, elite palatina costs 750 they have army gary defensories who are incredibly cost effective but they're very uh cheap now you have uh and this conundrum is specific against huns and sassanids the problem here is that you can see Cataphractari uh, being put to double silver, Cataphractari double silver, Skolai Palatina triple silver. He has too many funds uh, that he doesn't know what to spend on. The reason he's put so much money here on the Cataphractari is that he, there's no point in him bringing Klibonari. Klibonari are an option for the Western Roman Empire, I believe. A Klibonari costs 750, very expensive. But the problem is Klibonari can, just cannot match up to, uh, to the Sassanids. Um, so he's just so the most the wisest choice is to bring cheap shock cavalry, absorb the charge, and then bring your more elite uh, shock infantry to destroy the the uh, engaged Pushtigban cavalry. So that's the problem. Uh, you are you really want to bring cheap cavalry, like the Cataphractari, but then you just have too much money left around. And you can't really just put like single gold uh, or triple gold elite palatina and elite and army gate different stories because then you're not spreading your money enough and then you're putting uh, undue risk on your melee infantry um, if that makes any sense that's just something that popped into my head when i was looking at his army so yeah he has seven total cavalry to mine nine he has weaker cavalry to mine uh, he's got much better uh, infantry than i do and of course, his skirmish, uh, his skirmishers will lose to Arme uh, Armenian slingers any day of the week. So in this case, Sassanids have a huge chance of winning. 
So he's going to start engaging. This is a this is what everyone would do when they see Sassnitz. Anyone who's uh, you know semi decent at the game in the current meta. Uh, before that, this is why I've kept my Persian bows on my flanks. Persian bows, you can uh, you notice 14 missile damage. That's because they're all on uh, whistling shot. I have Persian mounted bows on flaming. I have whistling shot and I have Armenian slingers. So this provides triple uh, benefit stacking um, against enemy cavalry. So these guys have uh, gotten shot at by Armenian Slingers. These guys have gotten shot by Armenian Slingers, by Flaming Shot, and by Whistling Shot. So that's minus 25% charge speed, minus a uh, total of 21 morale, and minus 8 melee attack. So they have lower charge, lower morale, lower melee attack. Just all in all, terrible, terrible units now after this uh, huge amount of stacking going on. Now, to the uh, point of this video. I charge in with Griff Panwar, very easily pull through because the problem with Diamond as I've explained in, in the video or in the previous test is that it's very easy for Shock Cap to just pull through. Now his Cataphractari chase after my guys but my Griff Panwar are just off the fucking field man. They just charge through Elite Palatina, destroy them to 35 units. They're down to half strength, they charge into a second Elite Palatina and the second Elite Palatina is down to 79 men. These Griff Panwar just became insanely cost effective. I'm charging in with Persian Brigade here. And uh, the Cataphract Ari will take, uh, you know, they'll do some damage, but the fact is that since they have diamond formation on, they could have completely flattened this Persian Brigade. Instead, it's gotten a couple of kills and some HP damage here. And they dis uh, they can't move out now. Uh, charging in with Griff Panwar and Dalevite Warriors here. Griff Panwar destroying Cataphract Ari. His Fundy Taurus, this is a very smart move from Oblix. He charged his Fundy Taurus onto my uh, Armenian Slingers to stop them from firing because there was no way they would win in a skirmish engagement. Meanwhile, uh, he used his Cataphractari here, not in diamond formation, not in wedge, and uh, I've char he charged into my push stick bun. My push stick bun, um, I think I counter, counter charged with them, yeah. Now he's going to charge in with his Magister Militum. Uh, Armenian Slingers uh, didn't get any shots, if, shots off on them, just finally got a slight little charge in, uh, sorry, a, sl a slight little shot off, and then I'm going to charge in with my Spa Bed, and then I'm going to bring my Dalemite Warrior as well. Uh, so the flanks have gotten flattened for uh, Oblix. It's going to be very hard for him to pull off this victory now. Persian mounted bowmen and uh, uh, Persian bows, even on whistling shot, the Persian bows got a couple of kills, which is very strange. Uh, Persian mounted bowmen with four kills. Now, Pushik Ban got a charge into Elite Palatina. Um, the, this is a problem with my strategy here. You need to, after, after firing, it's so incredibly micro-intensive. You need to fire with your Armenian slingers, with your Persian bows and your Persian mounted bowmen. But then you've got to stop firing with your Persian bows and your Persian mounted bowmen at the very least, or at least with your slingers and with your Persian bows, because then you're putting the 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 negative you're putting the penalties of whistling shot and uh, uh, flaming shot, and um, uh, the the Armenian slingers things onto your push stick ban and onto your grip ban. But regardless, against uh, such depleted melee infantry, uh, there is no way they'll be able to withstand that charge. Here, Pushtigban, under no penalty, is going to charge into Elite Palatina. The Elite Palatina are dead. He's brought in a Skolai Palatina with half strength to help support this battle. Since I had my Armenian Slingers and my Dalemite Warriors already in that battle, I was able to freely move my Spabed out. They've only taken six casualties. Pushtigban going to charge into. Uh, the remaining Funditorius here. He doesn't know what to do with his army carry defense stories. There's nothing for him to do. He's the the flanks have been flattened before he knew what was up because uh, my push my grip Panwar just pulled through, destroyed his uh, elite Palatina. That meant that he lost the flank battle much much quicker than he had anticipated. And now his army carry defense stories are left uh, stranded, basically. Grip Panwar destroyed elite Palatina. Uh, got a charge in on the Skolai Palatina at the end, uh, I believe. And meanwhile, uh, the Magister Militum is taking concentrated fire from three Arme uh, Armenian Slingers in precision shot, as you can see there. It's, go it's going to make them lose their speed by a whole lot. The Persian Brigade can uh, catch up with them easier. And then I believe I have a Sassanid uh, uh, Pushikban Cataphract, which is going to chase after them as well. Master Militum down to 50 units. These are some of the tankiest general units uh, that you can find. He's going to rear charge my Dalemite Warriors, which is a smart move. Uh, Persian mounted bowmen making their presence felt in super late game, uh, destroying the Funditorius. Pretty smart, uh, or sorry, pretty useful uh, of them there. Uh, still taking huge amounts of fire from Armenian slingers. Here is Armageddon Defensorius charging into my Dalemite warriors. Pop them into shield wall at the last second. Uh, they've already gotten a lot of kills, and uh, they will do reasonably well against Armageddon Defensorius uh, when they're in shield wall. Again, Armageddon Defensorius just so incredibly cost effective though. Master Militum down to 24 men, taking so much fire from everyone. 
I've popped uh, Flaming Shot back onto my Persian bows, and I've got Armenian Slingers in all sorts of directions here. Uh, slingers here getting uh, a single experience shot on there. And at this point, you know, it's just that his his standard army army gear defensories are just going to get charged at by my cavalry. So charges on charges on charges. His Magister Militum down to 11 units. The enemy general is dead, and his army gear defensories. I just pulled through with my spabed, and that is going to be it uh, for this game, you guys. Uh, yeah, full strength army gear defensories here, getting crashed onto, uh, getting their butts crashed by by pushing one cataphracts. Uh, and decisive victory for me, one of the rare decisive victories, but I, it's, Obelix is by no means a bad player, he is a really good player, probably even better than me, um, not that that's saying much though, but he is t definitely a very good player, the fact is that if you don't, if you don't anticipate your uh, Griff Panwar, or the enemy's Griff Panwar charging in, it's just so incredibly deadly. Uh, the elite Palatina here, one in five kills. My army, uh, my Griffon Rai single-handedly destroyed two shock cavalry units. No, sorry, sorry, two shock infantry units. And then the huge disadvantage in terms of quality and quantity in cavalry showed here, and uh, that essentially lost him the game. Uh, my Armenian slingers here with a double experience shot run just focused fire on his magister militum and destroyed them. And um, Griffon Rai, making their presence felt like crazy. Triple experience shot runs on two of them. Uh, sorry, push Bun, and, uh, you know, a single experience shot run on the other one. Grip, one of the Grip Panwar just didn't do anything the entire game. That's that's how uh, decisive the game was, simply because of my increase in numbers uh, of cavalry. I really like the Whistling, uh, Slinger, and Flaming Shot uh, stacking. That's one of the few things that, uh, that, that's one of the things that Sassanids can do very easily, and that I don't think other uh, factions can do as easily. Um, that said, while it is a very smart, uh, uh, you know, wow, tooting my own horn here. While I think it's a very smart idea to do this, uh, it requires a lot of micro in that you need to put your guys on flaming shot immediately after. Anyways, guys, that's the end of this battle. Hope you enjoyed it. For more, peace.